is no boy at this age that is cute enough or interesting enough to stop you from getting your education. <laughs> a really rough couple of days, and I sort of have been inspired to make a video about this. A lot of thought. I've just been thinking a lot the last couple of days. Ugh, it's it's just been rough. It's been a rough. Couple. So I probably should blend that in a little bit, right? Should I bend? I don't know. And I am not really that great of a makeup artist. I'm not like I used to be really really into makeup and clothes and all that stuff when I was younger, but. Uh, I really just don't get into it that much now. I just do it because I, whatever. I just do whatever I think is good, and oftentimes it's not, so please don't judge me. But I don't feel like it's society's fault entirely for putting women in a box. I feel like it's a lot of the people in their personal lives as well. Like, a lot of the relationships I've had or the guys I've dated or talked to, I feel like only a few have really got it and respected what I did or what I was trying to do, um, whether it be, I, I, I'm sure many of you know now, I am a female rapper, I do music, I produce, I sing, I write, um, music's like one of my main passion hobby things, but, you know, I do a lot of other things as well, and I'm very, very busy, I have a lot of hobbies, a lot of things I do every day, and a lot of them sort of, uh, all intertwine with each other, whether it's, <sighs> marketing, reading a book, learning how to run a business, um, making a video, s setting up a video, trying to find people to be in the video or shoot the video or sending my video to people, um, trying to get my video on blogs, making music, producing music, writing music. Like I do a lot of different things and I do it all on my own. I don't have people, I mean, I do have people that help me record and produce and stuff like that, but I pay them, you know? So a lot of what I do is making money, and then making music. So I'm always trying to better myself as a person. And every day I sort of get up and say to myself, how can we learn something new today? How can we improve a little bit, you know? Hey, the, I was watching Louis C.K. the other night. And then I was watching this um, female stand-up comedian. She's from the UK. And she was re she's really funny, too. She was very smart and just had a lot of great things to say. And... Um, I was tweeting yesterday, where are my tweets at? I will, sh I will read them to you. And I'm uh, part of my bronzer, right? I'm trying to, to wear bronzer just a little bit. Like, I know I'm a very pale girl, but I've been, like, putting tanning lotion on lately. So I can look like the true Italian that I am. When people say women aren't funny, it's because we're not allowed to be. Because it's seen as slightly unattractive and masculine. And I'm watching a pretty hilarious stand-up comedian right now, and she's talking about this exactly, and I'm super proud. She's telling a really funny story about how this one guy was, like, women might have the physicality to race cars, but they don't have the mental aspect to race cars. And as this guy was saying it, he fell off of some sort of lift. <laughs> YouTube girl comedians are oftentimes, are oftentimes trolled and called annoying or ridiculed. Not everyone has to have a makeup tutorial channel. Not every girl has to have a what I eat in a day channel or makeup tutorial channel. Like, not every girl has to have that. Some girls are really funny and they're clever and they like to write and they want to make funny skits and they want to make funny story time videos about whatever, you know? Like, girls that are real or are funny are seen as less feminine or gross. A lot of women that are funny or loud or have a personality and opinions on the world or things to say, they're treated as annoying or less attractive than a girl who would just sit there and be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. A girl that just fucking bebops around, you know? And, and guys won't come out and say that, that they have a problem with it. That's not appropriate. Um... They'll just be shady and treat you differently. It's really frustrating. It's it's really frustrating. Not everybody's like this, but I mean, I feel like it's sort of this unspoken thing. Like nobody would sit there and actually admit that or tell you that, but they just will. I'm going to go on here. Okay. Um, For instance, this one kid that I was dating, he, he was five years younger than me. Okay. And now I'm not a cradle robber. He's of age. Okay. He's five, he's five years younger than me. Um, he was super mature, though, um, or so I thought. But, and I was really, really close with his mom. His mom was really, really awesome. 
Um, in fact, I'm closer with his mother than I've ever been to any other guy I've dated, which is crazy. I've only known her for like a month or so. But his mother was a, a fucking incredible woman, like truly. There was, I don't know, there was something strange about him. Like he had a lot of things going on in his head, but he was afraid to say them or something like that. And I felt like I was always the one talking or always the one being expressive. And he was kind of just like, he would, it's just generic, like giving generic responses. And I guess it was, it made it a little bit harder to get close to him, but he still, he took initiative. He texted me every day. He wanted to be around me a lot, which was nice. And he treated me really, really well when we hung out. And um, this and by no means is me throwing any sort of shade. This is just explaining a couple experiences I've had with people that I've dated and I'm not even saying their names and none of you would even know who they were because I don't put it out there. I keep everything very private and, and very personal. But he would always complain about me being distant and that I didn't have a lot of time for him and would only see him once or twice a week. And yet I felt like we talked every day, we were really close and I took a lot of time out of my busy schedule to make time for him. And I told him like, I don't think you truly realize what I'll do. Uh, that I see you more than I see anybody else. I see you more than I see my own best friend, you know what I mean? Like, and granted, this is around the time when, you know, I'm applying to go back to school. At some point, I was auditioning to be in a movie, which I got the role, so I was practicing my lines. I work four or five days a week trying to make money so I can invest in making more music videos and finishing up two EPs, um, trying to market them and send out emails every day. And my parents, you know, they're, they're going through a divorce right now. So I try to help my dad out and I try to clean and be an adult, run my own errands, you know, and I make sure that I have enough time to sleep and take care of myself and maintain social media and all the other things that I have going on, all my other relationships and everything like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard, you know, I don't have a social life really because I have to work even harder than some people just to be able to, like, it's really hard coming up with a good product. You know what I mean? Like, it really is. It's a long, it's a long, tedious process to really come up with a good quality product and have your shit together. It takes a lot of work. I know you just probably see all these people you look up to and think, oh, it's, it's, it's easy, you know? I think it was Gary Vaynerchuk who I like a lot. I read a lot of his books. He had this photo. I think, I, I think it was him. It was on his Instagram and it was of an iceberg and it's in the iceberg was like this big, but only this much of it was peeking out of the water. And it's like everything that people see. And then below the water was all the hard work that I had to put in just for you to be able to see that much. You know what I'm saying? You don't see all the hard work that people put in. You just, you really don't. So I was like, what more do you want from me? You know, like, I mean, because every time I'd go over, it would be like the same thing. We would do the same thing or, you know, we would go here or do that. And it was like, I don't need to be forcing anything to happen. Like, I'm just doing my own thing. You know, if it happens, it happens. And I already told him, like, in fact, when I first met him, he wasn't, trying to get into anything serious. Like he came over, we hot tubbed. He was like, you know what I really hate? I hate when girls are on Tinder and they're like, only talk to me if you're looking to be involved in something serious. And I was like, yeah, that's really, really ridiculous because it throws the baby out with the bath waters. I said, if it happens, it happens. I'm not really necessarily looking for anything serious right now because I'm not ready and I feel like I can't be perfect or give all of my time because you know I'm going through so much right now and I have a lot on my plate going on. And I guess I'm trying, you know, at first it just seemed like he, it was like casual, you know what I mean? Granted, like, he didn't really have a job at the time. He didn't. He didn't have a job at the time. And he was in the process of sending out resumes and looking for a job. And two, like, he was looking for a job out of state. Um, and I'm not talking just one state over. I'm talking completely across the country. And I was supportive of that. Um, what frustrated me is that I invited him to a lot of things with me. Like, I would invite him, invite him over on my days off and last minute he wouldn't or he would pull some shit last minute or something that I invited him to really wasn't his style you know what I mean and I didn't care it was fine cool whatever you know there were a couple times where he was planning on coming over um on my day off and was like eh well I, mm, I don't know I can't now that is what frustrates me like like he expected me to be the one to like come over all the time and, and I try to make him a part of things it was just really hard he kind of has like social anxiety or, or whatever and stuff like that but it's 
It's just like, don't make me feel bad for having dreams that I really want to pursue while the clock is ticking. Like if you want somebody who's just around all the time, who doesn't have anything going on, who's just basic, you know, then by all means. But I don't think he really wanted that. It's it's like he would make me feel bad for being busy or working and trying to make money to save up or go into the studio. He's like, you never, like, I feel like you have time for everything else except me. And when I would try to make time, it was like, eh, okay. Like, I try, you know, I juggle a lot of things and I try and I, I've maintained a lot of relationships for many, many years um, in my life, you know, and I think a lot of people that know me get that. They understand, they get that. Um, and they really, really respect and appreciate and adore what I do. And those are the kind of people that stick around in your life, you know what I mean? Like, right now, maybe you don't have a lot of things going on and I do, but if the fact that I do makes you resent me or hate me or intimidates you, then like... You know, and I'm not doing that to, I'm not, it's not personal. This is just my life and what I like doing and who I am. And I am a person that likes to learn and do and live as much as I can. Like, why is it just expected for a girl to be humdrum and just available for a guy and just be basic? Why is it not okay for a girl to bust her ass in the work field and put her, her job in the same position in her life as a man does? It's okay for a man to do whatever he wants, but a girl has to apologize for it and explain herself. A guy won't ever come out and say, like, I have a problem with it. it. It's still, a lot of the times, intentionally ignore you or be distant because they're resentful or hurt want to hurt you back, like hurt people, hurt other people. But I was never distant, you know, and I, I, I have a lot of things going on, but I was never distant. And um, at least not intentionally, that's just not who I am. A lot of guys have told me that they were intimidated by me. Um, in fact, just last week at a show, this one kid said he was intimidated by me, but he absolutely adores what I do. We're very good friends. And it wasn't in a bad way. But some love it and support it and embrace it. And others just, well, they won't know how to handle it. It'll make them feel, it'll make them feel like shit about themselves. But the thing is, the way you are cannot make somebody feel like shit about themselves unless they already feel like shit about themselves. And others, yeah, others just stop talking to me. Even though, um, sometimes people will say everything that they wanted in, in a chick was me verbatim but they won't really be able to handle that because they'll have like some sort of inferiority complex and I know a lot of girls are eventually put down for being themselves they're treat being they're treated different for being expressive or for working hard it's as if like I, I think it's because the fuck boy generation really isn't grown up and a lot of them think girls don't even have jobs like they just float around all day instagram models or, or some shit like that and like one guy was like Oh, you're going back to school? Oh, okay. Well, I'm excited for you. Cool. He could have been. I don't know. But it just, the way it came across, it was like a not okay tone of voice kind of thing. Yet this person was very worried about their own career and were traveling. You know what I mean? It just, like, it doesn't make any sense. You worry about yourself, but when I do, it's like, oh. Just, like, why, why are guys allowed to have dreams, but girls aren't? Why? Can somebody explain to me why? Guys are okay with girls having hobbies and stuff, but it's like only certain ones, only safe ones, and not too much, you know, because that's too much is they can't handle it. This is why a lot of girls will set aside their needs and their dreams to chase after a guy. This is, this happens a lot. Guys are always talking about um, being hungry as fuck and being like, oh man, I'm like fucking hungry. Like you gotta be hungry. Girls are not allowed to be that. They're not. It's seen as as masculine. For girls to have a strong personality and a strong sense of who they are and be funny and fucking pursue their dreams, it is not seen as a sexy thing to a lot of people. And they won't admit that because it's stupid of them to think that and they know that it's stupid, but it's but that's how it is. And they won't admit it, they'll just treat you differently. A lot of guys will say that they did get it first, you know? Um, but over time, or maybe they just don't really get it. I, I don't know. Or they'll be like, yeah, I'm looking for a chick who's different, like who I can joke with, who's funny, who could be my best friend. Who's not like the rest. Who's When that chick is placed right in front of them, it's like, not saying all guys are like this. There are a lot of guys that I have, am great, great, great friends with who are always supportive of what I do, who get it, who really get it. And maybe it's the way that their parents were or their view on society. Who knows? 
Who cares? Just pointing out the hypocrisy. I think maybe a lot of the time too is that a, the guy wants to be the bigger force in the relationship. They want to feel like the powerful one because they're narcissistic and big-headed or they're trying to fill some sort of deep-rooted insecurity or void in themselves because they want to be the successful, powerful one um, and have that sort of upper hand or control in the relationship. I think a lot of the time some guys are like that. It's to fill some sort of insecurity. This is why we are still being put down. And it's because we're made to feel bad about ourselves not being good enough, this enough, that enough. And we're sh women are shaded for doing things like a man, for being themselves and doing what they want to do. This is still a huge problem. We can talk all we want on social media. The media can pander to equality for women all they want. But at the end of the day, today in the mail, sitting in my kitchen were these two magazines. Now we get a lot of free magazines in my house. I get free magazines every week. I don't know if it's because, you know, we're fucking lit over here. I have my own company. My dad is, well, I don't know why, but these two magazines came in the mail today. This one was for me. This one was for him. And I was like, oh, cool. They sent me something that can help me with my business, right? No, it was for, it's for my dad. I get so many of these magazines, and they all say the same shit on it. There's only so many articles you need to write about what makeup products to buy or how to do your hair. Birth control. Granted, so his mom called during sex and he answered. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why are these the things that we're teaching girls to worry about or that they need to worry about? Why can't apps that will save you money? We did it. Millennial home buyers share their secrets. Tony Robbins. I read a lot of Tony Robbins books. I watch a lot of his videos. You know, why was this sent to my dad? Why can't this be sent to me? Come on. We're not putting these kind of things in Cosmopolitan. And I know somebody will say, well, nobody's interested in stuff like that. Well, what if they are? Not every girl is the same or needs to be the same. You know? Like, yeah, we can be into makeup, hair, and clothes. But, like, at the end of the day, does that stuff really matter? Is that what, what's going to get us places in life? No, it's not. I think that... We need to change the dichotomy of the way the world works. And it's not just about who, the way society treats women. It's the way that men in their personal relationships in real life treat women. That's all I'm saying. Just throwing it out there. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Or interesting enough to stop you from getting your education. Look, if I had... If I had worry about who liked me and who thought I was cute when I was your age, I wouldn't be married to the President of the United States today. <laughs>